How to image a rhinoplasty. We have our patient chart open here for the young man we're going to do a rhinoplasty on. I'm going to double click his front view and here is our young man. Um, so uh, what I generally do is I start off with morphs, moving the big areas first and then uh, going down to uh, fine tune the details. So let's go up to the top banner under the moves drop down and choose morph. Okay, I'm going to go over to my patient picture and I now have the little plus sign with the little um, uh, crosshairs here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make boxes and within the boxes I'm going to push the, the pixels to move these areas uh, on his nose. So I'm going to start with a little box which is really kind of unusual for me. Uh, I usually use big boxes first but um, I wanted to move around some of these shadows um, very delicately. I'm going to make a little slightly bigger box. I am only putting in the box the area that I want to move. Um, everything in the box is going to move so you have to be careful not to choose areas inside your box that you do not want to move like the ALA. Um, so I'm moving these areas slowly and we're just about where we want to be. Now I need to work on the shadows up here but we're getting pretty close to the shape of the nose which is basically what the morph does. Now um, I want to also move some of these shadows so I'm making a box around the shadow on the dorsum and I'm pushing it out. There's also a corresponding um, dorsal shadow here. I'm going to push that out a little bit. Now we kind of have the, a good shape on this young man's nose so I want to go at this point to the tissue brush. So I'm going to go back up to the top banner and I'm going to choose uh, sizes. And that opens up my toolbox. You will notice my current brush is none. Um, so I'm going to go back to brushes and I'm going to choose a brush and I'm going to choose my tissue brush. Now this generally defaults to um, the slider in the middle under medium and I almost always use the tissue brush very lightly so I push it down to under the T of light. So now let's go over to our uh, picture. I'm going to click on the picture and I'm going to zoom in with the end key. Home key zooms out, end key zooms in. So it's much easier to, to work in a large area than it is a small area. So I like to zoom in when I'm working on a, a smaller area. So let's go back over to our toolbox. I'm going to choose a slightly larger size tool. And I'm going to go over to um, my picture and I'm going to try to fix this shadowed area over here. I'm going to click down with my Wacom pen on my Wacom tablet. I'm going to click down in the shadowed area, a dark area, and lightly sketch it down through the area that I'm wanting to darken. So it's a very light, quick sketching motion. I want to soften this whole shadowed area. So now I'm going to click out in this light area. I'm going to drag the light color into that shadow so it's not quite so strong and harsh looking. There is also a little bit of kind of a, a wide shadow here uh, outside the dorsum. Um, I often will soften those. It kind of distracts from uh, showing the shape of, of the nose that, that I'm imaging. It's also a good idea to make changes to this area if the doctor is performing um, uh, osteotomies. Let's do that on both sides. Kind of soften that wide feeling area. Now I want to create another nice aesthetic line on the right side of, of this man's face, which uh, what is the left side of, of our picture. So I'm going to go up into the eye and take some of this darker area and I'm going to sketch it down. All I did was borrow a little bit of dark color in another part of the picture to create a shadowed area that I wanted. So I've, I'm just lightly sketching and I've created that other nice aesthetic dorsal line for this young man. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. I'm going to do that with my home key. 
Ah, I see something right now that I want to fix. There's a little bit of bifidity here uh, to the, the tip of his nose. So I'm going to um, soften that slightly. I'm just going to kind of just drag a little bit of light color down. And then I'm going to just smooth down that color area on the Cayumela. Okay, I'm liking that a lot better now. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little more. I'm going to go back over to my top banner under View, and I'm going to choose the drop down to Original. And that opens up my original unchanged picture right next to my imaging. And it opens it up in exactly the same zoom and the same scroll as uh, my imaging picture. So we can kind of look from one picture to another and see those changes that we've made. Um, a lot of times this helps me see things that maybe I didn't see before. I'm going to soften a little bit of the shadow about the tip. Okay, so um, now that I have these uh, pictures up here side by side, I'm going to click, just click on the top banner of my imaged picture, and I'm going to go over to the top banner again under the View drop-down, and I'm going to choose Soft Compare. Uh, that's going to open up my uh, Compare Fade box. Here it is. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to choose an area of, of my, uh, my imaged picture to use the soft compare which will move the imaging in and out. So I'm going to choose my reselect button and I'm going to make a box around only the nose. Because we are shooting such big pictures these days, using the reselect button allows you to only choose the area of your picture that you've morphed, that, that you've made changes to, so that the soft compare is moving um, fewer pixels than if you just chose the whole photo. So I've chosen just the area that I've done the imaging to, and I'm going to go back over to my uh, soft compare box. I'm going to just touch the slider, um, and you'll see I have a blue circle, and the blue circle went away. Um, when the blue circle went away, it finished gathering all the information um, from within my, my reselect box. So now I can go and click down on that mover and slide it. And so you'll notice that the picture on the right I'm, I'm morphing the changes in, on and off of that picture, and it allows the patient to see the areas that were changed. He can see that the tip is narrowing, that the, the um, narrow dorsal and slightly curved dorsal area is straightening, and it really allows the patient to visualize the changes that were made. It's not always easy to look from one picture to another and understand um, what exactly is different from one to the other. This is especially value, uh, valuable when there's very subtle changes going on. So let's go ahead and um, close the soft compare box. Um, we can um, close our original picture and we can close our uh, imaging. Now it's going to ask me if I want to save my modified. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So now when it closes it has saved my imaging and there it is and I'm going to rename this picture by clicking the rename button and I'm going to name it imaged so when I go back into this patient's chart I know that this is an imaged picture. Uh, so when I open up that picture, I will still have the original available to me, and I can even make a copy of this original and save it again to the patient chart. But I still have both the original and the image by doing it this way. Let's go ahead and open up this uh, patient's profile. We can make pretty quick work of this profile. Um, we're going to take down his dorsal hump and do a slight deprojection. So let's go up to Moves and choose the Morph button. I'm going to very carefully make this box to include only that dorsal hump. And the area in the box is the area that's going to change. And I want to make sure that I'm only getting that dorsal hump in there. I'm not getting the radix. I'm not getting the tip, just the hump. And I'm going to push. I've lifted up my pen, and I'm going to put it down in the blue background area. And I'm going to push down that dorsal hump kind of diagonally. So here I go. I'm going to click down, push down that hump and then click down in my box, it's done. Um, now I'd like to do a little bit of a deep projection, so I'm going to make a big box out here. 
and I'm going to push just directly in, uh, directly onto the tip of the nose. I'm going to click in that blue area and push that nose in a little bit. Now it kind of blunted the tip a little bit, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to make a box and define that tip just a little bit. I'm going to take that dorsum down a little more since we did a deep projection. And there we are. Um, if we needed to, we could always go to our brushes, choose tissue brush, and um, do a little bit of, of work uh, with shadows if we need it. This young man really doesn't need it too much, but um, if you're working uh, with a, a patient who might need some of this, don't hesitate to go to the tissue brush to do some fixing there. Um, but let's go ahead while we have him here and let's do a chin implant. I'm going to choose my morph and I'm going to give his lower lip some um, support and then I'm going to choose the chin area only the area that I want to affect. I'm going to click down in the chin area. I'm going to push it forward. Click down and it's done. So let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit my home key. Now let's go back up to the top banner and choose original. Let's look at our picture side by side. Again, we've opened up our picture in exactly the same zoom um, and the uh, same scroll position as well. Um, I might want to go back and do just a little bit of change here to the shadowed area uh, under the chin. Since we've strengthened that area, it'll catch just a little bit more light. So. Um, now, uh, if we have our patient sitting with us, um, we can go to the under the view drop down, the soft compare. Now, this is the thing that I wanted to show you with this. Um, I am going to choose my reselect, and I'm going to choose the nose and the chin area. Um, that's those are the areas that I've changed, and so those are the areas that I want in my reselect box. So I've chosen that area. I'm going to go back to my soft compare box. Just touch on the slider. And it takes a little bit longer since I had a little bit more area chosen. But the blue circle is gone, so now I'm going to click down on the mover and I'm going to slide it. So now we can see the changes for this young man uh, taking down the dorsal hump, uh, reducing the projection, and also showing him the changes for a chin implant. So. I've often had patients say, well, what does the rhinoplasty look like without the chin implant? Just hit the reselect button again. Only choose the chin. Touch the slider. And now we can just take the chin implant off and show the patient um, this is what the, the surgery looks like with the chin implant. This is what uh, just the rhinoplasty would look like. And it's a really nice way to uh, show them um, a nuanced add-on um, to the surgery. Um, and they can really see the benefit of doing that. OK, so we are all done. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to close my image picture. It wants to know if I want to save modified. I'm going to say yes. Um, so here is my modified picture. I'll rename it so I don't get it confused. Um, and uh, that is how you image a rhinoplasty.